Hi, this is Nick from The Run Testers, and this video is our complete guide to the Garmin range. Uh, now, all four of us have kind of been uh, journalists with running publications and tech publications for a long time, and we've been testing out Garmin for many, many years. Um, so this video, basically, we're gonna go through everything that's kind of available from Garmin in different categories, um, so you can find out which is the kind of the best watch for you. We've got everything ranging from cheap uh, options under 100 pounds, right up to the kind of high-end Phoenix line. And uh, we'll also be looking at some of the best older watches that are still available from Garmin and picking out which ones are still really good value for money and are actually still kind of our top pick and which ones really have been superseded by um, kind of the newer models bringing new features to the table. We're looking at the watches in kind of five categories. We're going to look at budget options, uh, kind of really cheap options under £100, then the kind of all rounder options, kind of, kind of around £200, £300 then your kind of high-end Phoenix jobs, and then Garmin smartwatches. Um, so you can jump straight to the category that you think is most relevant for you, or watch the whole thing. Enjoy. Okay, so let's start with Garmin watches under £100. So if you haven't got a massive budget to play with, what essentially do you have at, you know, at your disposal in terms of options? And what we're saying, you're looking at this price point, you're looking at a watch that will give you the basics, but generally, it'll be very reliable in terms of what it can do. Um, you're gonna get a GPS, you're gonna get a heart rate monitor um, built in, um, you're gonna get some basic smartwatch features, um, you're gonna get those core metrics. Um, what you're not gonna get, things that you're gonna have to spend more money on, so, you know, a nicer design, you're probably gonna have to pay a little bit more. It's gonna be well built, but it's probably not gonna be the prettiest, um, if that's something you care about. Um, extra kind of training and analysis features, which you're gonna to have to spend a bit more money on as well to get in Garmin's range. Um, smartwatch features as well. There's, you know, there's more to be had, spending a little bit more money uh, on stuff like the 4.0245 and, and above. Um, and maybe things like battery life, um, GPS battery life and get a little bit longer in terms of how much you can track. But you can get a really solid experience not just if you're a beginner, if you, you know, you're somebody who just cares about those basic metrics, um, there's some good options. So our pick of the Garmin watch that you should pick up under 100 pounds is the Garmin 4035. Now it's the one we picked out in our best running watch video overall. Um, now it kind of, it's, it sits like RRP kind of price point of 120, 129 pounds, but actually, if you look around a lot of most retailers, it is around a hundred pounds and it generally is always on sale. Um, and in terms of what you're getting, you're getting a square and design uh, running watch. You're getting an always on kind of display. You're getting the basics in terms of GPS, heart rate, um, some basic um, notification support. Um, you're getting the ability to create interval workouts. Um, you kind of have run walk support uh, in terms of tracking um, so there's a lot if you're new to running but there's also a lot if you just care about those basics in our testing things like GPS were pretty reliable um, heart rate monitoring maybe not so much but you do have the option to pair it up with a chest strap um, and get that more reliable data things you're not getting you're not getting um, anything beyond notification in terms of smartwatch features. Um, you're probably not getting as much battery life, you're getting probably enough for a week, um, that's GPS battery life as well. Um, there's training analysis features we spoke about, there's not much really going on on that front. Um, and yeah, the design, maybe not the nicest looking watch given you know what you have in the Forerunner range now, but if you can live with, with that and not too bothered and you're just looking for a reliable, um, solid running watch, um, whether you're a beginner or you just care about the basic uh, metrics, the 435 is the one we think you should go for under £100. So what else sits under that £100 um, kind of range in terms of what Garmin offers? So the other things to look at are the 430, which is essentially the 435, but cheaper, um, only really concentrates on those run tracking um, features, um, and to be honest, if you didn't care about the extras that you get on the um, 35 that we spoke about, um, the 30s are fine uh, watch to go through as well. 
You're also looking at something like the Garmin VO Sport, which is a fitness tracker, but it's the only fitness tracker in the Garmin range that has built-in GPS. Now, it was for a while, it was the only fitness tracker that had built-in GPS, but you've got stuff in Huawei, um, things from um, Xiaomi um, and Amazfit and those kind of brands who are offering that GPS um, at a cheaper price point. But if you wanted a fitness band rather than a watch with GPS, it's you know you've you've got an option there in the Vivo Sport. Um, it's also the, also the Vivo Smart, which is a fitness tracker. It doesn't have GPS. Um, it's very much a you know a fitness band, but you know keeping an eye on your you know monitoring your health and your fitness over the day. Um, and probably not the best option to go for um, you know if you're looking for something with a really strong running experience. So in terms of what's available, thirty five for us. Um, potentially maybe looking at the 30 and then just you know being mindful that with the Vivo Sport and the Vivo Smart they're not quite um, as well designed for run tracking um, and that's something to keep in mind. So next up is budget Garmin watches so what do we mean by budget um, what we're saying is that you're starting to step up from the kind of basics you're getting in on that under 100 pound um, kind of price point so something that's a better fit for kind of you know day-to-day -day use so you might be getting a nicer design to live with and to use throughout the day and maybe go to sleep with um, you're getting more in terms of training and analysis you're getting more in terms of you know workout features so like structured workouts um, you're getting more on the smartwatch front as well if that's something that you kind of crave from a running watch as well and more battery life as well which is always a desirable thing to have um so what are your options so our budget garmin watch pick is the garmin 4runner 45. now obviously this is the successor to the 435 um so what is actually different um there's some big things obviously the design from the you know is the first thing so you're getting a, a round um watch as opposed to a square one um, you're getting um, a thinner watch you're getting it in two size options which we think is really nice um, you're getting a bigger screen with a better resolution than 35 um, you're getting essentially the same kind of core sensors in terms of what you know how you track your runs um, but you're also getting kind of greater satellite support you're getting more memory for you know to kind of store your workouts before you sync them over um, you're getting compatibility with Connect IQ, which is Garmin's um, software platform, and it means you can download watch faces, not apps, watch faces only, but it's nice to have that access. Um, you're getting a little bit more in terms of battery life, and it just generally feels like a nicer watch um, to live with. We still think the 35 is a great option at that price point, but if you've got a little bit more money to spend, the 45 is the one that you should go for in terms of our budget watch pick. So what are the other Garmin watch budget options? So one to look at we think is the Vivo Active 3, which also comes in a music edition, but you know these watches are generally found at around 200 pounds, under 200 pounds. Now compared to something like the 45 and the Vivo Active 3, what you're getting in addition is more in terms of smartwatch features, so things like payments, obviously the music that you have to pay extra for, um, you're getting more sports kind of tracking profiles outside of running if that's something that you care about. Um, you're getting kind of additional sensors, so you're getting, getting an altimeter to measure elevation. Um, you're starting to get a little bit in terms of the navigation features, so it has the back to the start um, support, so when you're out running, it hit back to the start and get you back to basically where you started. Um, you're actually getting around about the same battery life, um, typical kind of smartwatch you use and in GPS battery life. So not that different from a 45, but if you want something that's a bit more rich in terms of those smartwatch features, still gives you roughly the same kind of running features as well um, that you'll get something like the 45, um, then that is a good option. Another option to look at is the Garmin Instinct, which is kind of Garmin's, one of Garmin's outdoor watches. So it's a cheaper outdoor watch compared to the Garmin Phoenix. Now you're getting all the kind of things that you expect from a, um, a Garmin in terms of um, run tracking. So it will do treadmill and outdoor tracking. Um, you've got, you know, kind of around 15, 16 hours of GPS battery life, but you also have an ultra track 
um, GPS mode, which samples the GPS data less to give you kind of longer tracking time. Um, so you've got that on the Instinct. Um, because it's an outdoor watch, you get a bit more in terms of the kind of navigation features. So you're getting breadcrumb trails in real time. Um, you're getting the kind of back to the start features you'll get on something like the Vivo Active 3 and some other watches we've spoken about. Um, so if you wanted a little bit more in terms of um, kind of a rugged outdoor watch look, something with good run tracking based on our experience, and a little bit more in terms of kind of navigation features um, than the Instinct, which you can find for around 200 pounds as well, if you have a good look around, um, is worth checking out as well. So the other budget watch option we have to talk about is the Garmin 400 235, which we know is hugely popular. You know, it's a watch that we see at a lot of events and races. Um, it's an old watch now, but it's still pretty reliable in terms of what you get from it. And, you know, you can usually pick it up for around 150, 70 pounds. It's generally always on sale. Um, Garmin still sell it from their site as well. So it's one worth looking at in terms of what you're getting from a watch. You know, you're getting um, something that's kind of going to deliver all those kind of main, you know, kind of key running metrics. You're getting some additional kind of training and analysis um, data insights as well um, you're getting a heart rate monitor you're getting some basic kind of smartwatch features there as well so it's still a you know a solid kind of option uh, to look at if you're on a budget um, now we should probably talk about the 245 in this conversation as well and how the 235 compares to the um, 245 now there's some key things that we think you know are going to be a big deal for people that look at these two watches versus design now you're actually getting a kind of smaller um, watch with a 245 in comparison to the 235. So smaller cases. The 235 is essentially a little bit slimmer, but I don't think you massively um, kind of notice that difference in the two watches running with them. You're getting a better resolution display on the 245. Um, you're getting more in terms of smartwatch features. You're also getting music and payments, which you wouldn't get on the 235. Um, you're essentially getting most of the same kind of running metrics and you get some additional support for kind of things like advanced running metrics which you can get from additional sensor on the 245. Um, battery life is actually more on the 235 so it's probably like a day extra um, and a little bit more in terms of GPS but generally you've got kind of a week's worth of um, training there. Now one of the big things we think is with the 245 you're getting more in terms of navigation features so you're getting those kind of breadcrumb um, trails in real time you're getting back to the start features so those are things that you kind of like the idea of you're not going to get that on the 235 um, that's something to consider but as we said 235 at the price that you usually found out it's still a good budget option to look at Next up, we've got our best all-round Garmin, which is really the kind of perfect balance of features and price, we think. Um, and our pick is the Forerunner 245, either music or non-music, depending on whether you want to pay the extra 50 pounds to have music on your watch. Obviously, it's a very useful feature for some people and not very useful for others. Um, so the 245 really is kind of a step up on like the 45 and other kind of budget watches in terms of both the features it offers and just kind of general performance, really. Um, you are getting things like breadcrumb navigation on this watch with turn-by-turn -turn directions. Uh, you're getting deeper training insights uh, from Garmin. You're going to be told things like whether your training is productive, you know, um, if you're overreaching perhaps and you're actually your fitness is going down despite the fact you're putting in more work and you need to scale it back and do kind of more easy running or no running at all um, you're also getting a longer battery life this has 24 hours of gps will last you a week of use even running every day i found um, and there is kind of an ultra track mode to kind of extend the battery life over over 30 hours it's not really the same as you're getting on the high-end garments which can really extend the battery life of the watch to kind of you know 60 70 hours but you know there is there if you want to eke out a little bit more juice on a long run the music features are also really really good on garmin mainly because they link up with spotify so you can transfer your spotify playlists across to the watch uh, and listen to them offline uh, you need a spotify Spotify premium account but that's something that you can't really see on many other watches Samsung has it but actually lots of watches don't they just let you control Spotify and while there are other streaming services that do allow you to do this Spotify is the most popular obviously um, so it's quite nice that you can do that pretty easily on the watch and syncing up uh, maybe in kind of the early models of music sometimes I had problems with the music uh, the headphones connecting to the watch but lately it's been pretty good for me I've never had a problem with my headphones not being found by the watch once they were set up also on the 245 you get 
pace pro using courses that you upload to the watch and then follow now this you basically can set up so you get mile by mile kind of or kilometer by kilometer um targets uh for a race which are based on kind of the elevation within that kilometer and also your overall goal uh, i've used pace pro to run like kind of the loch ness marathon and my best half marathon on undulating courses and it's really really handy to know that you know actually this next kilometer might be a bit slower than your others but that's all within line for your overall target because it happens to have a hill in it um so yeah it's a nifty little feature to have on the watch i really like it um it just just it tallies up with the way i pace my races which is kilometer by kilometer um but other people might not be so keen uh, you also get, you know, the kind of stuff you get on the Achieve Watch, like structured training plans, uh, and you know, you can set up your own structured workouts. You've got the kind of classic five-button design here on the two four five, which makes it easy to use, easy to control on the run. The two four five really is the kind of sweet spot, the kind of Goldilocks watch in Garmin's range. You're getting, you know, a lot of the really good features from the premium watches, just not such deep training insights or things like full maps. Um, and you're also getting, but you're not paying, you know over 300 pounds and in sales you can actually get even the music one close to 250 so that's you know pretty nice little pretty nice price point for what is a very very capable watch that will meet the needs of most runners easily but there are kind of other things in this bracket i think there's a couple of maybe two real ones that are worth mentioning uh, there's the garmin instinct solar now that's a bit more expensive it's kind of 380 pounds you're getting this kind of rugged outdoorsy looking watch um, which has the solar panels which can extend the battery life um, it kind of gets it up towards 38 hours of gps and you know if you put it in certain power modes you can it, the watch will last indefinitely if you're in sunny conditions you know it's a really nice little feature the screen's much more basic it's much smaller there's no training insights on that watch it really is geared more towards kind of outdoorsy people rather than keen runners looking to get every scrap of detail on their run but it's still a very capable run tracker with structured workouts in that kind of with that kind of different design it's a bit like a casio g-shock that some people might prefer another very popular watch in this range is the forerunner 645 now this is a bit older than 245 um, and that does mean that it comes down to a similar price and sometimes even cheaper sometimes it's around 200 pounds and it's a really really capable watch it's a fantastic run tracker it's got music it's got a barometric altimeter which the uh, 245 doesn't so you get better elevation tracking um, it's got a smarter design with like a silver bezel it's a bit better looking but it's an older watch which means it doesn't have kind of Garmin's newer watches have a different GPS chipset so the battery life which extends battery life on the 645 it's not that great you're only getting 14 hours of GPS as opposed to the 24 you get on the 245. So with the 605, because it's an older watch, you're not getting newer features on Garmin's, uh, things like uh, Pace Pro or the new training suggestions, um, body battery even. Like basically, it's not gonna be supported with new updates. So you have to accept that. You are getting a cheaper watch that's still very impressive in terms of materials used, but you're not gonna get newer updates because it's, it's just you know not one of the new watches in the range. Uh, also around here, you're gonna find smart watches like uh, the Vivo Active 4 and the Garmin Venue. Uh, these are kind of touch screens they have you know the venue has a nice amoled screen uh, these are geared more to kind of more towards all-rounder fitness you know rather than pure running but they are still very capable run trackers using touch screens obviously isn't as good on the run i find as um using buttons but you know there are options there they're cheaper they come in under 300 pounds and if you do want a slightly smarter looking watch that has music and uh, has music has a nicer screen has garmin pay those options are there for you as well we're gonna we'll come on more onto smartwatch options in the garmin range in a later part of this but yeah, they kind of fit in this zone. Pure runners, I think, would definitely prefer the 4 and a 245, though. Uh, other than that, you're really looking at things that might drop down from the kind of higher brackets uh, on sales, things like the Phoenix 5 Plus. We'll come on to all of those in the um, in the high-end Garmin section, but there are some options there. And I, I guess we'll say a final note for the 4 and a 235, which is obviously a long been one of the most popular running watches on the market. I do think it's time to move on from it. <laughs> um, it's not getting much in the way of battery life. It's not getting much in the new features. Um, you can find better options than it, basically. Although it was a very, very good watch. Okay, let's move on to the high-end Garmin and talk about what you're getting here, which is basically everything that Garmin has to offer. Uh, you're kind of getting the best designs, you're getting the best in terms of training insight, tracking, compatibility with external sensors, smart features, you're getting the best navigation stuff here, you're getting like full color maps on certain models. You're also getting the beefiest battery lives again on certain models, so really, if you want you know everything that garmin has to offer you're shopping in this kind of bracket and within this bracket our top pick is the um, phoenix 6 pro um now this is 600 pounds it's very expensive the range actually goes a lot higher than that in terms of cost if you get things like solar charging or fancier materials this is actually the titanium uh, model which is a you know again a couple hundred quid more but it's a bit lighter than the standard steel um, and the reason we've kind of gone for this is, uh, first of all, let's rule out the standard Phoenix 6, which doesn't have music and maps. Now, we think the maps are worth it for the £70 more you're paying for the Pro version. These are pretty incredible. Like, they're, you know, they're full-colour maps. They're downloaded to the watch on your wrist, so you can create routes on the fly, whether that's kind of 
finding a new route near you when you're in a new place, um, or even just going out for a run, getting lost. You can then ask the watch to create a route for you to go back, whether it's the way you came or a completely new way or the, you know, the shortest way. It also has um, Climb Pro built in. Now this is a very useful feature, basically, if you're running on hilly terrain. Um, if, you've, if you've uploaded a route to the watch, it will analyze all the climbs in that route and then snap to that screen automatically um, when you're on a climb. And you can see how much elevation you have left on that particular climb and also kind of how much you've got left to come on the rest of the route you're on. Basically means that if you're on a, you know, a climb with blind corners, you don't know how much further you've got to go uphill, you won't overdo it. You know, you won't just dash to the next corner and then see you've got another kilometer of uphill work to do, which is very dispiriting. Um, so by that you're getting all the best smart features Garmin has. It has the music that you're getting on the kind of the 245 music version, you know, links to Spotify and everything. It has NFC payments, has, you know, notifications, all that kind of jazz. Uh, and you're also getting more advanced training insight on the Phoenix and a couple of other watches in this bracket. Uh, these will tell you how well you're acclimating to heat and altitude if you're training at those kind of conditions. You also get a training breakdown, uh, both into three areas, which is kind of your anaerobic training, that's kind of your intense above threshold stuff, intervals, track work, a high aerobic, which is more like kind of tempo runs, and low aerobic, which is easy runs. The idea being you can see a breakdown of the three, make sure your balance is right, and Garmin will also suggest workouts each day to kind of ensure that your balance is right. So it will tell you, you know, if you need some more speed work in your life, or if actually you need to just do some easy running for a while. Get all the stuff, plus the usual training uh, insights you get on things like the 245 in terms of whether it's productive overall. You're also getting Pace Pro on these watches, obviously. I've actually used it on this Phoenix to pace my, uh, my best marathon and my fastest half marathon on undulating courses. Um, and you're getting kind of this nice design on the Phoenix. I like, obviously, depends on what you're looking for. This is quite an outdoorsy, rugged look, but, you know, it's a nice, chunky watch. And it isn't actually as heavy as uh, it sometimes, you know, looks on paper, although it is kind of 80, uh, 83 grams in the steel version and 72 for this titanium. Um, it's reasonably comfortable to wear all the time. Battery life is pretty good, very good in fact, it's 36 hours of GPS on uh, the Phoenix 6 Pro. That drops to 25 on their 6S and extends up to 60 hours of GPS on the 6X Pro, the really beefy ones, uh, which has also a slightly bigger screen than this. Um, uh, and with the Phoenix, you're getting Power Manager, which allows you to kind of set up uh, like settings on the watch to actually you know, see what's using a lot of power and maybe turn things off. Now, especially at night, this is very useful. I basically have it set up to turn off a load of stuff automatically at night, which I don't need. And this has actually added a couple of days of battery life to the watch. So that's quite a nifty little feature. And also there are extendable battery modes for long distance running events, like you can get up over 70 hours in a low GPS mode. And there's things like the expedition mode, which will last you, you know, 40 days, you know, if you want to track something like a huge hike across the Himalayas or something. So yeah, there's really a lot going on there. Uh, however, the Phoenix Pro is not the only watch to have nearly all these features, there is the 9 Forerunner 945, and that's the big alternative in this high-end bracket. It's cheaper, it's £520, it's £80 cheaper than the 6 Pro, um, and it's really almost, got almost everything that's on the Phoenix 6 in a lighter plastic design. It's, it weighs 50 grams, so it's much lighter on the wrist, really be appreciated perhaps by triathletes in particular who like a lighter watch, but anyone who wants a lightweight watch, you know, it's there for you. It's got a slightly smaller screen than the 6 Pro and the 6X Pro, it's the same size as the 6S. The battery life's the same as on the Phoenix 6 Pro um, with 36 hours GPS, but it doesn't have the power manager features to kind of extend those, um, extend that battery life any further. But otherwise, it's really got everything on the Phoenix 6 in a lighter build and it's cheaper. A lot of people that will appeal to, I think, because, um, you know, this is a reasonably heavy watch. And especially, I mean, I've got quite small wrists, but if you have even smaller wrists than me, you might not fancy the kind of chunkier Phoenix. In fact, you might not even fancy the 945, which is still quite a big watch. And you might think about the 4 on the 745. This is cheaper still, it's £450, so that's kind of £70 cheaper than the 945, and you're getting kind of a stripped back version of the 945 here. It's lighter still, it weighs 47 grams, it's got an even smaller design. You are losing some core features here, you're not getting maps, which you do on the, set, on the 945. Uh, you still get breadcrumb navigation with turn-by-turn -turn kind of um, directions, but you know, you're not getting the full colour maps. The battery life's also a lot worse, it's only 16 hours of GPS, which obviously could be quite frustrating, you know, it's a triathlon watch and it doesn't, you know, probably won't last you more than about four or five days, uh, we found with our training load. Um, you are still getting all the training insights though and the suggested workouts, uh, you're getting very good tracking, um, you are getting music, you know, it's a pretty good all-round watch, the 745, and it's 450 pounds and it's small. Like, I think at full RRP, we definitely would suggest that the 945 is better value for 70 pounds more to get those maps and the kind of much bigger battery life. But, you know, if this starts to drop in sales um, and if you um, really value the fact that it's smaller on the wrist, then the, the 745 is another very good option in this high-end bracket. 
Uh, beyond that, we're kind of looking at kind of the other Phoenix models, really. There's the Phoenix 6 non-pro, which doesn't have music and maps, has all the other great stuff, same battery life, same trading insights. That's, you know, 530. That's another option if you don't care about music and maps. And if you do care about music and maps, but don't necessarily care that much about training insights, the Phoenix 5 Plus, uh, obviously the previous model, does have the maps, does have music, um, doesn't have such great battery life, only has 18 hours of GPS. It's even a bit heavier than the newer Phoenix. It's kind of got a slightly bulkier design. Um, it's kind of 86 grams in the kind of standard Phoenix 5 Pro, uh, five size. Um, but it's a nice watch, a bit older. You can normally pick it up for kind of 300, 400 pounds maybe in sales. So that's another option uh, if you're prepared to lose that kind of the newest features like the training insight, stuff like that won't be coming to the Phoenix 5 Plus, but it does have music and maps. Uh, and then, right at the top of Garmin's range, there is the Mark series, um, which uh, are crazy expensive watches. Like, so the one we would probably talk about is the Mark Athlete uh, and the Athlete Performance Edition, which is the same watch with basically with a heart rate monitor as well. That's you know the normal Athlete is fourteen hundred pounds. Uh, it's got like a titanium design. It's in, you know it's very nice looking. It's very heavy. It's like ninety four grams, and the battery life's uh, I think like twenty eight hours of GPS. It's not all that impressive in terms of paper. It's just really all about the design. And if you want that. Um, you're going to have, you know, the Mark design is only in the Mark watches. Otherwise, you're really getting the same features as a Phoenix with slightly worse battery life. Okay, so our next category is smartwatches. Now, what do we mean by smartwatches? So, essentially, we're talking about a watch that can kind of be a good mix of sports tracking, which, you know, Garmin does really well, but also bringing in things like, um, you know, that's kind of around communication. So, you know, dealing with messages, making, you know, being able to make payments, um, listening to your music. Um, this is Garmin's kind of response to, you know, the likes of the Apple Watch and Samsung Galaxy Watch. And actually, it's trying to roll out a lot of these features across all of its devices. But there's some key smartwatch options in its range that we think are worth highlighting. And these are the kind of ones that we think you should look at. So our option for the Garmin smartwatch that you should probably look at is the Vivo Active 4. Now, the Vivo Active 4 has always kind of been considered the smartwatch in kind of Garmin's range. Now, what are you getting? You're getting a touchscreen display. Um, it's not a full color display. It's still a transvective display, which is the kind of display tech that Garmin uses on most of its watches. But it's, you know, it's a very nice screen to use. Um, you're getting music as standard um, as a feature, so built, a built-in music player. Um, you're getting all the kind of key um, or core run modes, so kind of treadmill, track, um, kind of outdoor running. Um, you can pair it to a chest strap and um, heart rate monitor chest strap, and you have a built-in heart rate monitor. Um, you're kind of getting good satellite coverage in terms of you know tracking your outdoor workouts. Um, you're getting a kind of roughly like a week a battery life um, and GPS battery life enough for a few sessions um, of running a week. Um, it's just, we think it's, you know, it's a good option. You get it in two sizes. Price-wise, we think it's really reasonable. Um, and if you're looking for something that you don't mind charging every week, um, the Viva Active 4 is a one that we think is the uh, smartwatch that you should go for. So what are the other options in terms of what Garmin offers in terms of smartwatches? Um, the main one outside of the Viva Active 4 is the Venue, which is actually more of their fully kind of fledged smartwatch because it's the first watch to have a full color AMOLED display in Garmin's range. Now, essentially from a running perspective, we've talked about this in our comparison video with the Viva Active 4, um, you're getting essentially the same experience um, based on, you know, on our testing. And um, the big differences here are the difference in the display technology. And we think you're getting a little bit extra battery life on the Viva Active 4 purely because of that um, screen that the venue has to um, power. Um, you also have the Venue SQ, which we reviewed recently. Um, that is essentially a square version of the Venue. Um, it's not the display, same display technology used as the Venue. It's a um, lower quality, but it's still a color display. Um, now, uh, one thing to kind of highlight uh, with the Venue watches is that it's a slightly different um, software experience just because um, there's that touch screen to kind of put, you know, factor in a bit more. Um, we don't love it. Um, Generally, with the Venue SQ, we found uh, a little bit more problematic. 
Um, and generally, the running performance wasn't as good as what we got on the venue in the Viva Active 4. Um, so those are some of your other options. Uh, you've also got to look at the Vivo Active 3, which we mentioned. So the Vivo Active 3 and Vivo Active 4, very similar in terms of experiences. Um, you don't get music as standard, you have to pay for that. But you know, at this kind of uh, stage, it's around about the same price. Um, it's still a solid option to consider. Um, it's a good looking watch. It's a little bit, um, uh, you're getting a little bit more in terms of battery life compared to the Vivo Active 4, but we still think that's one worth looking at. And it's also worth mentioning that things like the Phoenix 6 Pro um, or the Phoenix 6 Series range, um, the 4945, the um, 4745, those all have smartwatch features as standard. So they all, all have uh, built in music players, payments, notification support, which is a bit more. Um, richer in terms of your Android experience because you can respond to the notifications. Um, so those are worth keeping in mind, you know, if you're going up and you're paying a bit more, you're still getting, as well as those kind of richer running features, you're getting those, the best of what Garmin has to offer in terms of smartwatch features. So that's it guys, that's our guide to Garmin. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, leave a comment below, let us know if you've been using Garmin for a while, what's your favorite watch from the range, which one you kind of think about buying next. Um, yeah, like and subscribe, ring the little bell so you get notified when we're going to do another video and we'll see you next time.